Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the latest update on this transition that we're going into February. You can see the trough that we're dealing with now, bringing all this atmospheric river towards the West Coast. And there is another Pineapple Express coming your way. And this is going to bring all the way to the Southwest a big deep trough and that's where our storms is going to start it's going to bring feet of snow it's going to bring a lot of flooding we're actually going into a rex block where we have upper level high blocking a cutoff low if you've never been here before make sure you subscribe i am all year long i did warn my subscribers about this pattern a long time ago and now it's coming into fruition it is bringing a lot of snow a lot of flooding and potentially some high winds and some very strong storms that's formed up maybe in the gulf maybe over the southeast of the lower 48. Now, when you look at your update on the Arctic Oscillation, showing the cold air coming down the first week of February, shows in the middle of February, it will come down even lower and a little bit stronger. Now, I'm showing that this will be along the west coast, mostly along the southwest, and along the southeast because we're still going to be in that high ridging of that bubble where this cold air is going to pull away and it's going to be a long time above average warm month. You can see this when you look at all of North America at your lower level temperatures, you're at 150 millibars, that all of this pink color. When you look at all of this pink and this light blue as well, that is the color of the Arctic temperatures coming through. And you can see it's not really coming, not even into Canada. We're going to be on this higher ridge where this is going all the way to the north. And you see it just stays like that for a long time. You don't get any of that Arctic air. But at the same time that you're not getting those Arctic temperatures, you are getting some cooler temperatures that is going to swing through. Now it's going to be your average to above average, but it is going to swing through and bring cooler temperatures in this transition. Some pretty cold wind chills coming with it as well. But we do need to watch it because there is a chance for that cold air to come down. You can see right here with the long range with the Euro, it gets out of confidence once it leaves this darker shade. But you see there's a chance for maybe some cold air to come down around the 16th through the 18th, a dip somewhere around there. Now, when you look at the previous run, obviously it didn't have that, but you can see from the last couple of runs that that concern did grow along that time and that dip of your average right here this green did lower down some from the previous to the now so the cold air is going to come down a little bit further but you also can see when you look at your epo your east pacific oscillation your jet stream on the west coast because everything comes from the west coast travels across our lower 48. You see, you do get that trough all the way on a six as you get that cool air coming with it. And it does come around again around the 15th for a longer period of time when that next blast of cool air does come down with it. So we do need to watch that next transition. And you can see all of this when you look at your 200 millibar winds. This is your jet stream way up in the atmosphere. As you can see as you go to the beginning, you start getting this troughing going on. So you get the troughing coming in all the way from the southwest. This is bringing your first set of storms. And you will notice that that does change as it comes further. It comes even deeper as we go towards the 10th. Then we got another area of some big troughing coming in, bringing our next set of storms. And you can see how this just keeps going all the way from the 10th towards the middle of February. We stay in that deep trough. So you can see all this when you look at your vorticity. So as you look further, you can see that we do get that clipper system. It does come through, brings that little mix, that little patch of snow with that and some rain as that moves along. That's not bringing no serious threat. But then you start getting into this pattern where you get that upper level high right here aloft. And that upper level high is going to sit there and that's going to create another problem because with this trough going in, this trough going all the way from the southwest all the way into the south central. And it's going to carry that way. And just like last time, you can see the goes right into that Boom, that Rex block, right there is that Rex block. You have your upper level high right there, you got your cutoff low right there, and you got your next storm system coming in because this trough is gonna keep on going towards the middle of the month. So you can see all this play out right there. There's your Rex block, there's your storms bringing your flooding, bringing some more front induced, 
Low pressure systems is a lot of favorable environment, especially on the eastern side of the U.S. for this time. And you can see right when that all that low pressure gets built up, here comes in the high pressure. Get your Rex block, you get your storms in the south. You can also see it from North America. It just moves in and just bam. You get your Rex block, you get your upper level high. In the north, you get your cutoff low in the south, and it keeps that storm to the south and it keeps it very powerful. You start getting a lot of heavy rainfall and potentially some strong winds. Also for the west coast, because right after that, you get that storm system comes right on in. That brings y'all some high winds, some more heavy precipitation, helping with more snowfall and more flooding. You're going to go straight from day one to nothing to day two, riding a slight risk. And it has been trending that this is going right offshore instead of going right up the coast just like we talked about in the last video now you can see on your two meter temperature anomaly that we are still got all these very warm above average temperatures that's still going to be kicking in but if you keep your eye on the west coast and the southeast you will see below average temperatures will be moving in for these areas as we go through that transition because of that bubble. So what this bubble is doing, it is going into a deep trough, we're going to the high ridge of warm temperatures, and then it's going to another trough. So it's called an omega block, but it's called a Rex block when you have an upper level high above a cutoff low to the south. At the same time, it's gonna bring the cooler temperatures on this trough and cooler temperatures on this trough. And on this high ridge right here, this is where it's gonna build even more warm temperatures way to 35 to 40 something degrees above average all the way into canada now as we go into this just so you know what you're looking at you can see down here in a legend this is how much normal temperatures you will be above your average the white will be your average and the blue will go into the colder temperatures moving in below your average and that is for this time of year and you can see as we go into later this evening it's already moving those above 40 degrees into canada keep your eyes on canada they're going to be getting a lot and you also see that it is moving a little below over to southeast but this is going to stay warm for people as you stay in that above average bubble as we go through wednesday as well but look how the below average starts to kick in for the south east especially over florida this is where these storms are going to swing by and bring some cooler temperatures as we go past thursday into the weekend you see that builds a little bit while everybody else stays above average but then as we go into friday and saturday and sunday it's going to start building right over the southwest this is where some cooler air is going to start moving in and bring you that heavy snowfall so don't forget that you do have the heavy snowfall that is coming with this transition look at this warm bubble that we're going to be in you're going to be 25 to 30 degrees above average over the north central still over 30 to 5 to 40 above average into canada this is going to be a big warm bubble that's pushing through but after you go from the 4th through the 5th, then you're getting that dip of that cooler air that's coming across the East Coast and across the Southwest. So you're going to be at least 5 to 10 degrees below average all along the East Coast and along the Southwest as we go through this transition with these temperatures. And if you keep your eyes all the way from Florida all the way up the East Coast, you can see all the way from the 5th through the 10th. These cold temperatures will be making their way through again. It'll just keep coming through from the East Coast and the West Coast while we remain in this bubble all the way until the middle of the month, bringing these above average temperatures moving through a very warm situation. However, over the Southeast and over the Southwest, you can obviously see you're going to be in this pattern for quite some time. Now you can also see that once you get that Rex block and you get that low pressure in the south, that cutoff low, it is going to bring a storm system across the south and the southeast. And we're still getting that storm system on the west coast while we're getting those cooler temperatures bringing you a lot of snow. And this is going to add up to feet of snow while you're getting storms across the south and the southeast. And it's still showing right in the beginning of February where we have all this favorable environment, a lot of lift in the atmosphere is right where this storm is going to be forming. But you can see it is very far towards the east. This is going to be right above the eastern Caribbean. This is going to be out into the Atlantic 
before it strengthens up. It's not really causing too much harm towards the Caribbean. But you can see also that we have more building up as we go into the middle of February. And just to show you it's trending, you can see this with the Euro as well. Matter of fact, the Euro gives it a lot more lift, a lot more favorable environment, a lot of more vertical motion going on in the atmosphere. Now, thank God this is going offshore, obviously, but it is bringing some potential impacts right along the coast of the lower 48 plus all the flooding plus update on a long range so you can see this one that we're about to start going into for the first week of february we got another strong system coming to the west coast of the u.s as we go towards the 10th and this is going to carry across and be strong all the way for the east side of the u.s as well we've got a strong situation coming through from the 10th through the 20th so this is the latest on the warning. So we do have a slight risk for damage and wind and all this light brown from the 6th through the 12th as we go through this transition. And you can see the moderate level for the higher winds from the 6th through the 9th as we get that trough. Showing that with the Euro is still bringing that 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts along the west coast. Transition strong across the south central and the southeast as that goes in the gulf. And as it goes offshore, bringing some strong winds over there as well. Some 50 and 60 in the red. And you see these stripes of these storms, are these bandons come by. Look for the south central. That's bringing 50 and 60 and the west coast. 50 and 60, higher elevations, even stronger. Now, just for trending purposes, you can see the difference with the GFS as well. You can see the strong 50s coming on shore with all that orange. 60s and 70s, matter of fact, the brown is the 70s. And you can see the same thing for the south central, getting a high 40s and 50s. Across the south, showing the 50s come more inland and the southeast. And the Canadian. The Canadian is actually showing a stronger set for high winds. It's still showing a 50, but now it's showing a 60 also for the south central. Still got it for the west coast. But look over here. This is getting crazy. This is getting towards the 100. This is getting a 60, 70, 80, and the 90, and the 100. And that's showing a lot of high winds potentially as this transitions. Just be aware of that. And we still got the flooding. Remember, from the 8th all the way through the 12th, slight risk for the deep south and for the southwest. It is getting stronger, and it's going to be the strongest in this dark green right here from the 6th through the 9th. And this is adding up to a lot of rainfall. The first you get that first banding storm system coming all the way across. Then that second storm system is going to add up even more and bring more towards the southwest and more towards the eastern half. So you do need to watch for all this heavy flooding that's going to persist as we transition into February. You got your first blast. Then as you go through the fifth and the sixth, then that next blast comes on through. And there is going to be a lot of snow that's going to come out of this. Literally feet. And we will get through that first. Let's get through this. You got your day one of flash flooding. Nothing. As we go through day two for Wednesday, bam. Already puts you all straight from a marginal to a slight risk for flash flooding. So just be careful from southern Oregon. Going through California in a slight risk and the marginal for flash flooding. This is for tomorrow for Wednesday and this is going to grow as you go through Thursday it's going to go further down the southwest all the way to the LA area bringing you that slight risk for all that flash flooding for Thursday so just be aware it's not over you got another flooding situation coming your way but then look at this transition as you go through Friday then it's going to bring that marginal down to the south central bringing you some more flooding and then Saturday puts you straight into that slight risk immediately for Louisiana southern Mississippi for flash flooding and your marginal is growing all the way into kansas for saturday and you can see the update on the risk for heavy snowfall still everything i've been showing you but we also got this section right here that's going to pop in from the 8th through the 11th this is going to come after that transition when we have that high pressure bringing everything in this direction this is when we're going to get that i will update you that's further down the road but you see all the way for the beginning of february a lot of heavy snow still coming but you can also see with the Euro Ensemble control member of not only the snow that's coming across the west as we go from the 5th through the 10th, get another transition, still got that chance to bring some snow to northeastern Georgia, upstate South Carolina, higher elevations of western North Carolina. Still showing that possibility as we get that very high ridge and nothing really happens after that for a minute. Maybe something later, but that's way later. Showing you might get a 3 to 5 that builds up over the mid-atlantic a little bit for the carolinas and georgia very small area so higher elevations only 
but it is possible. And for the West Coast, it's just going to add up to feet. If you see anyone in this pink, that's at least 12 inches of snow. And over here for California, you're getting feet of snow. Also for Utah, Nevada, Nevada getting hit real hard. Idaho getting hit real hard. And even though we're above average, it is going to bring some cold weather. So as we go through for tomorrow, that clipper is going to be moving offshore. But we're going to start getting those temperatures. This is your two meter temperatures. You're going to start having them freezing temperatures for the northeast also for the north central the rocky mountains but the wind chill is still going to be the worst of this transition so for tomorrow morning this is what it's going to feel like as you go through the morning but it will warm up through the day so your daytime highs is going to warm up with this warm bubble now as you go through thursday cold temperatures coming back down again still towards the south but the, once again the wind chills is what you're going to feel the most out of this transition and your daytime highs for thursday is going to skyrocket right back up even bring the 70s right back to southern florida and southern texas now friday here it comes again not really that cold you're starting to get that transition of that bubble and your daytime highs is going to warm right back up for friday but now you're starting to get that transition of that trough building these storms up. And as you go through Saturday, you can see that big high bubble of above average temperatures is going to roll through, bringing the cooler temperatures with it. But you still got the cold temperatures on the western side of this blocking pattern and on the eastern side with your wind chills. Remember, the wind chills is going to be the worst part of this transition now as you go through saturday you can see it's going to warm right back up now as you go from saturday to tuesday you're going to have this above average anomaly moving through where everybody's going to stay warm and it's only going to be cold for the rocky mountains and the northeast but as we go through tuesday it's going to come back and so will the storms. So as we go through Sunday, you go on that strong system on the West Coast, bringing you more of the atmospheric river flooding, more heavy snowfall. And you can see we go on that high ridge and bringing these storms across the south. So you got to watch out for them bannings across Florida. Still think it could bring some tropical storm conditions across. It won't be tropical. It will be front induced. We still could have conditions come across. As you go through Sunday, it's going to still persist on these storms on the West Coast. Why this is still building, could we have that Rex block bring you that flooding and the whipping of the rain bands and the damage and winds. As you go through Monday, it's still going to be there on the West Coast, going a little bit further down California now, and this is going to start pulling offshore. But then we get a surface low start building up along the coast of the Carolinas, and a chance for some high winds do persist. And as you go through Tuesday, you can see it moves further to the south and east, but still strengthens up as it goes and as it goes on tuesday you can see your temperatures are still coming right back into the 20s so you will have the cold temperatures if you do get that snowfall somewhere along the mid-atlantic and your wind chills will be very cold for that tuesday as well just be aware of that going all the way back down towards georgia and the carolinas even northern florida feel like you're in the 30s again with those wind chills also on Wednesday, the cold temperatures will be there again for the East Coast and the wind chills will be there again. So just remember for Tuesday and Wednesday, for the 6th and 7th, when that storm system pulls away, these cold temperatures, these cold wind chills will come back and he's got a little chance of that snowfall as well. But you got to watch for maybe those high winds. So now we're back to this screen again. So I hope you do understand what is coming around the corner. I will keep you updated. Make sure you click that bell. Do like the video. If this has helped you, everybody, thank you again for your time. Now, before you go on with your day, a few wise words. Proverbs 28, 1 through 5. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. A poor man that oppresseth the poor is like a sweeping rain which leaveth no food. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. But such as keep the law contend with them. Evil men understand not judgment. But they that seek the Lord understand all things. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And if you didn't see my community post yesterday, I took a family day yesterday. It was really needed. So thank you so much for y'all time. Hope you all have a very great day today. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> 
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.